Shall we talk about the ladies? Let's do. So this picture should definitely be familiar to you, and it certainly is familiar to me because I just talked about it with the male reproductive system. The fact is that all humans are born with the same anatomy. And if we have uh, two X chromosomes, then we're destined to become a lady. And if we have an X chromosome with that infamous Y chromosome, then we will become a fella. But what you can see is that we actually have structures that are the same. We start out with our little cloaca, with our little nubby kidney, and our exact same bipotential gonads, and two sets of tubing that ultimately we have some modification and some moving and some gubernaculum action, and we end up with two different, very different anatomical critters, very similar as well, simply because of that, that extra different chromosome. So the ladies, we have this, the, the development of a pink, it's pink, tube, and the disintegration of a purple tube. That's what it looks like in your body, really. And uh, we, we have some movement. Check out my bipotential gonads at this stage in the game and compare them to the position that they end up in when they become our ovaries. That's our gonad. Um, and, and there is some definite movement. You move from a place where all of our gonads start and the ladies drop a little bit and they kind of tilt on their side. And why is that? What, what's actually happening there? Remember that structure, the gubernaculum, that is like this little ligament that shrinks and it moves our uh, gonads around in our body. The fellas have the gubernaculum that actually pulls the gonad fully out of the body. That's pretty cool and interesting. But the ladies uh, still have it adjusted. Our tube ends up, uh, the, the tubing sits very close to our gonad. They aren't actually touching. So, in fact, our gonad is going to have to, like, fling gametes out into the body wall or into the, into the abdominal cavity and hope that the tubing, the structures in the tubes, will actually catch the ovary and then, or the egg, and then the egg will travel down into this muscular, small, like surprisingly small, uh, bag. And that is a baby apartment, depending on if you uh, have a parasite in your life or not. There will have been somebody who took up home inside that muscular sac. And they actually, like, totally take over. It's not really a renter situation. It's more like a parasite, more like a hijacking. Yeah, you get hijacked. True story, right? All right, so we're going to talk about the gross anatomy of the female. Then we're going to talk about the process by which we produce eggs. You know how the fellas produce sperm, but we're going to look at how the ladies produce eggs. Then that amazing, no, I'm not joking, it's amazing the process by which we actually barf out an egg one a month to uh, cross our fingers and hope that we will get a parasite growing in our uteruses. And then we're going to look at um, how our gross anatomy actually is very similar to male anatomy, and we have homologous structures, which mean it's the same you know, a homologous structure, this bipotential gonad gave rise to an ovary in the female. It gave rise to the testy in the male. And so those are considered homologous structures. That's it. That's our plan. It's going to be fun, huh?